We're currently ninth in the table with two games in hand. That's Everton 8pm Monday, followed by Arsenal. And somehow, we've struggled ourselves in a position where, theoretically, we could still get guaranteed European football depending on where we finish in the league. So we have eight games left right now. Can we finally do the impossible and get a consecutive winning streak going on? It seems very unlikely, but I think our only best bet, considering the state of this current Chelsea team, is whether we can outscore opponents. I've accepted now that we're a team that isn't good enough to play this master game where we can like stop opposition teams from counter-attacking us, you know, keep clean sheets whilst also winning games. We can't do all of that right now. And I think Pochettino is prioritizing focusing on one thing, and that is can we be a team that can build confidence in terms of creating opportunities? Confidence in front of goal. Can we take our chances? I think that's the best we can do. And technically, we are unbeaten in the past seven to eight Premier League games, which is something that you haven't seen much this season at all. But against Everton, Everton will pose us a big test. Now, you could be cynical and you could see this as like mid-table FC versus points deduction FC. But when we lost to them earlier this season, a 2-0 uh, defeat at Goodison Park, of course, goals from DeCorey, goals from McNeil. I thought they were the better team. I thought they outcompeted us. It was one of those games where Gallagher had one of his, you know, bad games of the season. And we felt that impact because we lacked that energy and fight against a very physical and strong Everton who were dominating us early, who had fun out wide, putting in crosses for days and looks more threatening on the counter-attack too. They're going to feel hurt after this recent points deduction. They've done so well considering that they've lost so many points this season to still be out of the relegation zones. So we can't be taking this Everton threat lightly. We must respect them and we have to be ready. And you think if we have any chance of doing anything, you're looking at our new talisman currently in Cole Palmer. I think in the past five games, it's like seven goals, three assists. It's absolutely unreal form. But you guys know me. I feel like when you have big upcoming games around the horizon and you're looking at the man city fa cup semi-final getting a win against everton is the confidence booster we need because we have to forget about that disappointing draw to sheffield united and we have to have some confidence and hunger to finally beat man city this season so my friends today i'm here to discuss team news press conference key points and give my predicted lineup as well too so i hope you guys enjoy Share your thoughts and opinions. Only hit that like button if you think we can be Everton on Monday. And let's not waste no more time. Oh, we start with team news and the injuries keep piling on and piling on. Now we have some new names to add to the list. You're looking at Enzo Fernandez and De Sassi, the latest players who are carrying knocks, it seems like. But it seems like it isn't like any serious injuries. So hopefully they'll be back against Man City. Outside of that, other players have picked up illness. You're looking at Raheem Sterling and you're looking at Robert Sanchez as well. And outside of that, it's the same old story of players continuing their rehab programs. But the only difference being Ben is now taking part in partial team training, which hopefully is ready for Man City because I think this guy is, you know, more solid than Kukurera at left back. I'm sorry. But, you know, I feel like over the past few seasons at this football club, the injury crisis has been worsening and worsening and worsening. And I feel like it's due to a multitude of reasons. Number one, if you're getting new medical team and staff, it's going to take these guys a lot of time to get used to working with their new players, understanding their health profiles and the best recommendations for them. That takes time. Outside of that too, a lot of players were already injured before the season even started. So is it any surprise that they're the same players that have been regularly been suffering with these reoccurring injuries throughout the season? I don't think so. The third reason is we have a lot of young players. A lot of these guys' bodies are still developing and growing. And I do feel like when you have inconsistent minutes alongside, of course, trying to compete for a first team spot, I think it can put your uh, body in like a, a bit of a precarious uh, situation. And let's not forget to, we have a lot of contact injuries, players who have sustained injuries in game. I feel like I have to say this because yes, it's frustrating that we have so many injuries piling up, but let's not fool ourselves into thinking that this is regularly happening during training sessions. And this is something that's a club issue when you know we have to look at the details. This is all piling up. This is all adding up. And of course, it's going to affect what Pochettino can do in terms of like, you know, his peak tactical management and ideas. But that's the situation we're dealt with right now. So you know what? And when I do my predicted lineup, there'll be two different predicted lineups. Make sure you guys stay right to the very end. But 
that's the team news out of the way. So we now dissect the key talking points from the press conference. And I'm going to start by focusing on like three to four points. Now I'm going to start with Madweke because it does seem like Poch has been impressed by Noni. Now we can't forget his incredible impact against United to force that penalty to give us a chance to come back to win that game in the end. And Poch was basically saying Noni was already here before the club signed Cole Palmer, which meant that there was now competition in that right wing area. And sadly, you can't use two players in that position in a game. The interesting news was that it seems like Pochettino is going to look to try and find a dynamic and balance incorporate both of them. And I think we noticed that in that game versus Sheffield United where Conor Gallagher off the ball, he was played on the left hand side of a midfield four which allowed Cole Palmer to be central, which allowed Noni to play on the right hand side. So could we do similar things to incorporate both? I wouldn't be surprised, but it's good that Noni has stepped up. I think 2024 is going a lot better for him internationally and you know, club wise compared to last year. And hopefully now that he's a bit, you know, he's more consistently fit now, you know, he is a big impact player for us before the season ends. To end things for the final two interesting points, of course, with all these injuries right now, is this an opportunity now for Cobham players? to, you know, show their impact and obviously start getting minutes under Pochettino. Now, Poch said that this could be a good opportunity for them because many have trained with the first team this season. That's many 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, and maybe they can step up and show their quality. He continued to state that him and his staff have worked closely and followed the academy closely. And he admits that, listen, because we have one of the best academies, not only in Europe, but in the world, it is a responsibility for us to, of course, pay attention to what they do. So could that mean that we see some shock, surprising youth appearances versus Everton? In my opinion, absolutely not. Porch will focus on using the experience he has because that's all he can turn to at the moment. And realistically, he may not even be here come the end of the season. So it wouldn't be his priority to start focusing on using young players for the future when he won't have an impact to work alongside them or to help them. So. I can accept that, I can understand that. Throughout the moment, I have to accept that and I have to understand that. So to end things with the final key point from the press conference, and I focus on this part, uh, you know, for a reason. Pochettino spoke about the current philosophy that he's having for the team right now. And essentially he says it's about creating opportunities as quickly as possible because he feels that's always historically been the Chelsea way of playing. And I have to agree with that. We've always been a very like direct team. When we play direct, when we play to create chances, that's me being our most successful selves. And I guess to play that way, it's a combination of players following the manager, also having that license to express himself equally as well too. And, you know, I understand what he's saying. We play to create chances now, because as he says, at the start of the season, we had all the possession. We were up here in terms of this metric and that metric, but... We weren't scoring goals and we were still conceding. So essentially he was saying, I would rather score goals at the moment and accept conceding. And as I've said throughout the season, I always hoped Pochettino would use this mentality at the start of the season where there's more confidence after a good pre-season but this time to really just be let off their shackles to attack to have that confidence in front of goal and when you get to this part of the season you can focus on fine-tuning certain aspects I think he's done things backwards but at least he's realized this is the way to go for the current state of this team and I have to accept that because yeah we can't forget that we were conceding goals for fun and not scoring anything not creating any quality chances so we can't forget that it's a shame that we can't fuse aspects of the beginning of the season and this state of the season because then you could see the potential right for this team but i think pochettino was being very honest and maybe for myself and all of us we might have to accept the frustrations of conceding because this team has to outscore if they hope to get any points at all so that's the key points from the press conference Share your thoughts and opinions and right now let's end things by breaking down the predicted lineups versus Everton on Monday. With so many injuries to first team players, Pochettino will be forced now to make some changes and for this reason I'll go for two different lineups. One will be 4-2-3-1 and the other would be 4-3-3. For the first lineup here's my 4-2-3-1. Now that's Nico up front. Mudrik, Palmer, Madweke in behind. Connor Caicedo in midfield alongside Kuku, Badia Shul, Jalap Augusto and Petrovic in goal. And realistically, I'm expecting Porch to use this lineup because it has the most experience. 
Um, I think it's a big opportunity for Noni now to really assert himself in the right wing position because he could have a very good end to the season if he puts in a star performance, combines well with Cole Palmer and shows how he can affect the game with goals up front as well. So that 1v1 threat has been something we've been missing in this team. Noni has that. And it'll be nice for him to get some minutes now and show what he's really about. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit worried to see Kukurera and Badia Shield. I thought they were quite bad against Everton when we lost 2-0 against them. I feel like with Kukurera in particular, I just have no confidence with his 1v1 ability to defend. I think he gets done too easily. I think he overcommits. I think he panics too much. And we're very susceptible to, you know, lost causes out wide too often this season. I guess my only fear with this lineup is that you know, we have to be on the ball. We have to take our moments. If that is to play transitionally, we have to hit Everton where it matters because I worry about our ability to be compact and be aggressive off the ball. I think this Everton team are a very strong Everton team and they show that in that earlier game this season. So not only is there big pressure now on our attack, but also the midfield where Connor and Caicedo, they must give us the aggression. They must win those duels. They have to be communicating. They must work in tandem. They can't be leaving us exposed to transitions against Everton. I have to see communication. That's the one thing that we just don't do enough as a team. So that's my 4-2-3-1 team out of the way, my friends. And now let's end things with my final lineup. And I've gone for a 4-3-3. Now it's a bit of a different one, but personally, this is the lineup I'm probably picking. Up front, I've gone for Cole Palmer. Alongside him, that's Nico and Madweke. In midfield, that's Chuku Mecca, um, Kaiseido, Conor Gallagher. And defence is a bit of a crazy one, but I've gone for Gusto at left back, Badia, uh, Jaliba, Gilchrist, and Petrovic in goal. Now, let me explain this before you guys start hitting that dislike button. But basically, when you've got Madweke and you have to introduce him in a team like this, he can only play right wing. So, how do you then use Cole Palmer? And I do think Cole Palmer playing the more false line role where he has that license to drop deep playoff opponents and take shots and goal. I don't think he's been awful like what people say. And actually, there's a bit more like fluidity behind how this is used because Nico Jackson normally will be the one to still take up these vacated striker positions with Cole Palmer dropping a bit deeper. So, you know, with Pochettino this season, it's not like a very conservative set in stone lineup. You know, players change positions, they interchange, they swap. So I think it could still work. And the most important thing is Cole Palmer gets to be in those central areas that can really help him affect the game. In midfield now, I've gone for Chukumeka, Kaiseido and Gallagher. I think if Enzo's out, I'm hoping that Carnes is fit enough now to start a game. And I think what he brings in terms of his ability to play in tight spaces, the little pauser. His timing to, of, of when he releases the pass at the right time, I think his goal threat too. And if Everton are sitting deep and, and defending, he's the type of player that probes between the lines. So with Cole Palmer more central, I would like to see Chuck Kumeka being able to maybe like combine and link up with him. And maybe just like create a bit of a different threat that we haven't typically had in midfield. And obviously in defence is a bit of a, uh, an interesting one, but because I'm lacking confidence in Kuka Ram, I've gone for Gusto at left back. Um, I've gone for Gilchrist at right back because if we have Madweke who has that 1v1 threat, maybe then Gilchrist could be that balance in behind defensively that could help him. I'd really give Noni even more license to attack the ball. And obviously Badia and Jaliba because I think Trevor Jaliba is a very solid squad player. And I think Badia sure, listen, he's had his difficulties this season, but... You know, unless you're going to use Silver, which I wouldn't use against like the very strong Beto and, and Calvin Lewin. I think Chalaba, Badia Show, Airily, pace wise, and you know, on the board as well, is the best balanced defense to turn to. So, my friends, that is my predicted lineups out of the way. Share your thoughts and opinions. How do you feel about things? And on that note, I'm Mimi FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll see you guys tomorrow with some more videos. Cool.